Today, we're gonna to be talking about how to protect your neck, save your spine while working in tech. This is not strictly limited to people working in tech and more so just anyone that spends a lot of their time either on the computer or on their phone. Before I start, probably should mention that I'm not medically qualified. This is not medical advice. I'm not a doctor. I don't really have any qualifications whatsoever. So when watching this, bear that in mind. I'm gonna focus on three major errors that a lot of people commonly do. Error number one, using your mobile phone with a poor posture. Classic example is when using your phone, you hunch all the way over so your neck is not even really being supported by your neck muscles. You're literally flopping over like this so you can text and do your things here. What this does is builds up a huge amount of tension towards the back of your neck, as you can imagine. The second error is just generally being seated for far too long. A lot of people spend all day seated in one position. The third error is sitting with a poor posture. So, if I take a seat, for example, like this, it may look like I'm sitting and I'm relaxed, but due to the way that a lot of chairs are these days, the main two points I have on the chair are my bum and my middle back. And in this slouch position, what that does is put a lot of pressure on the middle of those two points, which is my lower back. So if you do some of these things, but you don't have any pain, then don't just ignore this video. Instead, I would be aware that sometimes problems, aches and pains, injuries can build up slowly over time. So if you imagine that each time you sit poorly, you're adding a little block to the stack, all you need once the stack has already been built is one little thing like sleeping weird or using a different pillow to topple the stack over the edge and that's when you've hurt your neck and you need to go to a physio or you need to get a sports massage or something like that. It's not necessarily the sleeping weird that did that to you, it's over time gradual build up of tension and tightness and lack of muscle activation etc that ultimately leads you to that place. So why does this happen to us? You might be thinking, why is it that we need to think so much about how we sit and how we do these natural things? In my opinion, a lot of the things that we do in society is not set up to be conducive with keeping your body fit and healthy and doing things the way we were naturally, naturally meant to. We live in a seated society. You wake up from lying in your comfortable bed, you sit down to have breakfast, and you sit on the train to go to work, you sit at the office all day, you go out for lunch, you sit and have your lunch, sit back at the office, sit on the train or the bus to go home, long day at work, sitting down everywhere, so let's sit on the sofa, watch some TV, sit down for dinner, sit back in your bed, and you're just spending your whole life seated. I believe this reality contributes a huge amount to the way that our bodies are, and I can't see why it wouldn't really. There's no reason why this 90 degree sit is in any way natural. If you do look in the natural world without banging on about this too much, very few animals sit like this, and you can see there are many different ways to sit. You can be cross-legged, you can be in a straddle, you can be kneeling, you can be crouching, etc, etc. You don't necessarily have to be like this all the time. I don't see any animal that is just one way in one rest position all the time on a third party object, like a chair. Anyway, in addition to this, the general comfort in society these days pushes you towards a place where you don't necessarily need to be using your muscles that much. And often, sometimes you're not using your muscles 
when really you should be. I'm gonna elaborate on this in a second. So what are some practical steps you can actually take to make yourself feel better, to rehab an injury, or to prevent yourself from getting injured? Here are a few things I've picked up from my research over YouTube, through books, etc., which have helped me, and I hope that they will help you also. So step one is just to recognize the problem. As soon as you're aware that you shouldn't be sitting like this all day or doing that, then it can just change your mentality because every time you're smoking that cigarette, you can think, I'm not supposed to be smoking this cigarette. If you didn't know that, you might just smoke it and then just get about your life and not realize the harm that it is doing to you. So now, if you're more conscious about your behavior, next time you catch yourself doing this on your phone, you might think, oh, what was that? Instead of just being here, you can actively make the effort to change your posture, lift your phone up, lift your head. Yes, it takes a little bit more effort than literally letting it drop, but sometimes you have to make the effort for the longer term payoffs in the sense of healthy neck. So aside from actively lifting your head, you should also bring this into day-to-day -day activity. For some reason, a huge amount of our time is spent looking either in front of us or down, but we very rarely actually look up these days. So next time you're walking around, make the effort to look not just forward, not just down, but also up. We have a huge range of motion that a lot of us never use. If you're always on the phone, on the computer, doing this, watching TV, looking at the floor, etc. Look up. Next tip, if you are seated often, make a 20 minute rule for yourself. Every 20 minutes, you're either gonna change position or at the very least, you're gonna get up, you're gonna walk around, stretch for at least a minute. There are multiple positions you can assume even with a standard office chair. So there's no excuse or any reason for you not to do this. Obviously, some of them may be a little easier if you're working from home or you're at a non-judgmental office, but at the end of the day, you should prioritize your own health. My favorite alternate position is the crouch. You may not be able to do this in your office, but if you're working from home, then you may as well. This is really easy rest position and it's made easier by the chair that I'm using because it's got a slight diagonal so you don't need quite as much ankle flexibility but I find this a really comfortable way to work. You can type, you can do everything that you were doing from a seat but you can look after your back, your spine, etc. If the crouch is a little too advanced for you or you don't feel comfortable doing this in the office you can try the kneel, you know, either kneeling on the chair like this. You may have to adjust it slightly depending on your chair. You can work here. You can do one knee, one foot like this. You can sit on the chair, one leg folded like this. You can sit in this stretch position and you can increase your flexibility even while you're working. You can get rid of the chair altogether and you can simply kneel and do your work like this. You may have a standing desk, which you can do this a little easier, but if not, there are many ways in which you can improvise so you can work standing up, etc. There are a huge amount of different positions that you can take. If you want to splash out on the kneeling chairs or the special chairs that are not for sitting, then definitely do so. If you can also splash out in the standing desk or the desks that transform from this to a standing desk so you can adjust it depending on how you feel, that would probably also be great. Final pointer is always maintain 10 to 20 percent of tension in your abs at all times. This doesn't mean that you're walking around squeezing as hard as you can but you are maintaining a slight squeeze at all times and you're going to do this so much that it's going to feel like it's second nature. 
It's not going to be a conscious effort, but at the beginning it will. If you've ever had anyone that's come to you and said, sit up straighter, what you're doing when you sit up straight is using your ab muscles to some degree. If you're trying to sit up straight and completely allowing your abs to go floppy, you're going to notice a huge amount of additional pressure in your spine. The abs, in part, are used to protect the spine. So the more you use your abs, the more pressure and the more energy you're taking with your abs rather than pushing it into your spine. So what are some exercises that you can actually do that will help? I don't want to overload you with loads of different things, so I'm going to keep this very simple. Exercise number one, this is primarily for tech neck. What you're going to do is lie flat on the ground and imagine that you are skydiving. So you're going to have your arms out to the side like this and your head up. So from here, with your back engaged, your head up, you're not like this, because that's too much, but you're sort of in a neutral position, not here, not here, just a bit up. And your hands are not all the way as far as you can go. They're not down on the ground, they're up a bit. From here, you're gonna go down to the floor. You're gonna go back up, down to the floor, back up. And you're gonna repeat this 10 to 20 times, and you're gonna do three sets of that. If you want, on the last repetition, you can hold in that position, and you can hold there for 20 seconds or so, so you get a final little extra burn. Then as a stretch, interlace your hands behind your head. Sideways stretch, one arm, behind your back, other arm on your head, slight pull down to the shoulder. Experiment with really subtle, small movements with this shoulder and this hand. You can align it slightly differently. You'll feel stretches in different areas. And also slight variations of the angle that you're pushing down on. What's important with all of the neck stretches and movements is you do it very, very slowly and with very little pressure at first. When you're more used to it, you can start doing more of a stretch, but at the beginning, it's important to take things very slowly. In terms of ab activation, I do think it's very important for everybody to train their abs at least twice a week, and doing this will make ab activation subconsciously and consciously just much easier. So as an example of some ab exercises that you can do, just to keep it simple, we can do just 20 sit-ups where your hands are going from your thighs to just on top of your knee. And already here, you should be able to feel pressure in your abs if you're here. If you can't feel pressure, you might be doing the movement wrong. So it's important to really try and tense at this point and then lift with that tension. At the start, it might feel weird, but after a few repetitions, if you're concentrating on squeezing your abs and trying to use that muscle to bring you up and down, you should feel a burn from doing this. I'd recommend about 20 repetitions of this one. And then when you're finished, you can do 20 repetitions of turning where you've got one leg extended, one leg is coming in, and then your hands are on your head and you're gonna turn from the elbow to the knee that's coming up. And the point of this is to work out the abs on the side. The final two exercises are leg stretches. If you spend a lot of time in this 90 degree position, your hips are gonna get very tight in this position. What we need to do is essentially the opposite of this. So the hips are here, we want to stretch here. Because this position on its own can be quite awkward, 
You can either do it while holding onto a wall. If you are doing this, it's important to actively think about what you're stretching. Right now, I'm lifting my leg up. I'm not really stretching anything. You have to try first, stand straight. Second, make sure you can feel stretch in the front of your hips. If you can feel it somewhere else, you might not be doing the stretch correctly. Once you've established a solid straight position, slowly pull your leg back so you can feel an increased stretch here. Again, if pulling your leg back is increasing a stretch somewhere else, then try and just focus on this area that you're pulling back and forth. There's no point keeping this the same, pulling back, but all you're doing is this. Second way in which you can stretch this is actually using a chair. So what you can do, have a chair. It's better if it's not on wheels, it's not gonna move backwards. So perhaps you can support it with a wall or you can use a grounded chair or something like that. But essentially, all you're gonna do, starting from this position up here, holding onto the chair, make sure you're not gonna fall over. Slowly putting this front part of the knee on the chair. So you're not wanting your actual kneecap, you want the front part of your knee. So an exaggerated way is to look at it like this, but that's just to show what part of the knee is on the chair. But also make sure the chair is soft anyway, because you don't want to put a lot of pressure onto your knee like this. Put a cushion there, something like that. You're resting your foot on the back of the chair, and that is what's going to drive the pressure into this front part of your leg when you start to lean back. Also experiment with moving this front leg to different positions, different angles. All of this will affect the stretch. The next stretch is simply a hamstring stretch, which you can do standing or seated in various ways. In essence, the idea is to keeping your leg straight relatively, keeping your back relatively straight, you're gonna bend over until you can feel stretch in your hamstring, which is the back of your leg. You can do this with one leg, you can do it with two legs, you can do it on a raised table like this. You can experiment with, instead of going straight like that, Instead, stretch this way or stretch this way. Even on the floor, stretching here is very different to stretching, lifting my foot there, which is also different to turning my foot on the side and stretching like that. All of these different positions stretch different parts of your hamstring. So feel free to play around with slight subtle movements in that position. You can also just do this seated like that. And I would recommend doing the hip stretch and doing the hamstring stretch for at least a minute a day each. So you've got your neck exercise, your neck stretch, you've got your neck mobility movements, hamstring, your hip stretch and your abs all of that, realistically, is going to take less than 10 minutes. You can do it daily if you want. You can use those exercises as the start. It's really what I intended you to use them like. And then build upon them. You might have... There are many more neck exercises and ab exercises you can get into. This is just the genesis exercises, the basics, just to get you into the mindset of doing that sort of thing. Anyway, thank you for watching that video. I hope it was useful for you. We'd love any feedback in the comments. Let me know what you thought. Let me know what more you'd like to see from me, what other videos you'd like me to make next. Please leave me a like. Consider subscribing to my channel for more content. Thanks for watching. Have a lovely day. Yeah.